10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to episode 3 of the Odd Dad Out podcast. This is like the third time I've tried recording this every time I have some sort of failure or something glitches or some shit like that happens. So let's just dive right in. What do you think of the new intro? I'm tweaking with it a little bit. I've got some other stuff I'm going to plan on experimenting with a little bit. But for now, I'm going to kind of stick with that little sound because that's what I started with. That's what you're used to. And it, it's cool, but... I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. I might run into copyright. I don't know. Anyway, on tonight's show, we have another little bit of randomness because I wasn't supposed to be doing a show tonight. I'm basically doing this on account of my wife is at the hospital. Um, For those of you who are following along on Twitter and Facebook, I had a plan for episode three since last week. I've been posting up. I'm going to be doing this rowdy episode about... Uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper and the uh, UFC 190 fight and some other crazy shit going on this weekend. But all that got sidetracked between just, you know, technical issues and baby issues. Um, Right now, my wife is at our hospital, I won't name it, um, getting, basically, she's kind of on a 24-hour observational hold because we were having back and forths with the doctors over blood pressure and protein levels and test numbers and shit came back and it was high and one doctor says go into the hospital we're probably going to deliver the baby and another doctor says no your levels are still okay go home and so it's been kind of a back and forth getting jerked around by doctors for the last couple of days but enough about me And what's going on in my neck of the woods, neck of the woods, it's such a dumb saying, I live in the desert. Anyway, um, let's talk about some shit that I was going to talk about, because I don't have notes for tonight, because the notes I have for tonight were intended to be recorded almost a week ago. So these stories aren't nearly as fresh today as they were when I intended to do the show, but I didn't have a plan coming into a Wednesday night for a show that was supposed to be recorded on Sunday. So let's just kind of dig in a little bit. I'm going to skip over the Rowdy Roddy Piper thing because I I don't have a lot to say about him. Not that I don't have a lot of respect for the guy. I recently actually started following his podcast, which sucked because basically the week after I start following his show, he dies. Um, so no more Piper's Pit for me. Um, from what I heard it was a good show and he was a great entertainer and he was a great actor and that's what I'm going to know more about Roddy Piper was he was just a great actor and the guy put on a show and he loved to entertain that was just him through and through so you know lots of respect and uh, sincerest wishes condolences um, to his family and uh, now let's go on to the UFC 190 Ronda Rousey versus Beth Correa. I I've never I haven't watched the fight to know how the hell they pronounce her name. I don't really care. All it is is one other bitch got the shit beat out of her by Ronda Rousey. And she's just kind of laying waste to every female that wants to sign a contract in the UFC. Um, that's just kind of her thing. And it's it, it's sad. I feel bad for all those people, and there was a little internet meme about it, um, about you know feeling bad for all those people who paid sixty dollars to watch this fight for an you know it's over in thirty four seconds, and two days later everybody's watching it on Facebook for free. You know, to be fair, it's not as bad as that uh, Pacquiao Mayweather fight. Uh, not too long. Was that too long? I don't even remember. That seems... I think it was almost a year ago now that I think about it. Um, I lose track of time so easily. Um, I just remember hearing the disappointment to everybody when that fight happened that it was just a weak fight. 
I don't follow boxing. I don't follow well, most any sport, but I feel like everybody felt pretty hosed off to that fight. That it would seem like it was a whole big just cash grab for everybody. The the you know hundreds of millions of dollars that were paid out for this damn fight, and they could have done a better job with it. It seemed like it was just kind of really one-sided, and that one side wasn't trying very hard either. Um, but so, but you know, Ronda Rousey in 34 seconds is a shitload more entertaining than 12 rounds of Pacquiao Mayweather, and nobody got sued. At least not yet. The fun little story that's come up since uh, the Rousey fight. Uh, first off is that you know all the smack talk that went on before that fight uh, with uh, Beth Korea or Korea whatever the hell I'm just I'm gonna say Korea and I don't care if I'm mispronouncing her damn name um, what had previously made comments uh, about Ronda Rousey saying oh you know after I beat you it's okay you don't have to cry you don't have to go and kill yourself I'll give you a rematch you can try and get your title back never mind that you beat the shit out of her but uh, Beth, not Beth, Rhonda took this very personally because her father had committed suicide when she was younger. And this seems like a very personal attack. Of course, Beth Correa comes out and says, I didn't know that. I had no clue. Bullshit. Absolutely knew that because who the hell says some fucked up shit like that? Like, oh, go, you know, don't go kill yourself. It's okay. That's fucked up you don't talk like that that's not smack talk that's that's digging for something you you did that shit on purpose uh, to which Ronda Rousey justifiably beat the shit out of her oh well she had it coming she didn't talk shit like that there's there's certain level of respect when there's smack talk and and she kind of crossed that line so uh, to hell with her now she's just one other beaten down bitch you know in her wake um, what looks to be the setup now, and I guess you could say this is the real fight of the century, not Mayweather Pacquiao. This is the fight of the century. Is going to be Ronda Rousey and this chick cyborg Justino. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The prevailing story behind this is basically this is the only you know woman out there who could possibly beat Ronda Rousey. Um, problem with that is she is nowhere near her weight class. Um, Cyborg fights in the 170 pound range. That's her normal fighting area. Uh, Ronda Rousey fights at 135 pounds. For those of you who can't math, that's a 35 pound difference. That is a huge uh, massive difference uh, change in a fighter when you know you're used to being one weight and then you got to go not only drop weight but you're a professional fighter you don't exactly have body fat to lose you know this is not Jared from Subway who can drop 35 pounds in a week by walking and eating sandwiches when you're a professional fighter the only way to lose weight is to lose muscle you don't have the body fat. You doesn't have 35 pounds of body fat to lose, and so for her to be able to drop 35 pounds to be able to fight Ronda Rousey, she would basically have to lose her ability to fight. She would have to just completely shrivel up. I had heard stories that she'd been working with a team of doctors to get down to that weight because there was, you know, she had been told there was no safe way for her to get it. Um, you know, cut off an arm, I don't know. But, you know, uh, Ronda Rousey apparently is also facing a little bit of legal trouble because of, you know, Cyborg Justino, because apparently in, you know, smack talk for comments, and it just seems to be the big thing, man, the girls seem to talk more shit than anybody. Um, in her smack talk, she had mentioned her... Uh, trying to get down to that 135 pounds and she had gone on to say you know oh, if you can get down to 145 with all the steroids once you stop using them then you'll make my weight and you know implying that she's all juiced up on steroids 
which is you know standard def you know, defamatory statements it's this is defamation 101 the problem with it is and the reason why it's not necessarily uh, defamation is because cyborg justino has been suspended for 18 months for steroid use she was actually stripped of her title after a fight for testing positive for steroids and then had to serve 18 month suspension before she'd ever got back into the ring again or in, the case, in this case the octagon and in that whole time here comes Ronda Rousey to become the new face of women's uh, MMA and you know basically shepherding in an entire women's division in the UFC you know so she's kind of got an axe to grind she's you know unless she gets sick or something or loses a leg I don't see her making that weight it's gonna be that fight to end them all one of them will retire after this fight because it's not happening anytime soon um, they'll more likely end up in court before the fight ever happens if the fight ever happens Dana White wants this fight so bad but it's like dude it's a 30 you know fighters it's a 35 pound drop you're not gonna convince Ronda Rousey to put on 35 pounds to fight this bitch so you know what are the odds there's just no way for this to happen you know it'd make for a great show but it isn't gonna happen speaking of losing limbs because that was you know a couple of minutes ago um, those of us out here in the fun happy Sun Valley in the Phoenix have probably heard the story about this crazy asshole who uh, killed his wife and dogs um, this crazy bastard and I could look up his name but I think crazy bastard is all you need to know um, actually decapitated his two dogs decapitated his wife gouged out his right eye and cut off his arm just one because he you know, still needed the other one um, this fucking guy um, when I first heard this story all I could think was this has to be the worst domestic dispute ever in history my brain goes to think okay if he's got injuries and she's decapitated and the dogs are hurt then maybe it was some crazy out of control you know sort of fight they have a big argument he goes off and it's like oh I'm gonna kill your dogs then and he goes and he hacks the heads off the dogs and she gets pissed and comes out after him and he gets his eye gouged out and she hacks off his arm and retribution he hacks her head off as well I only partially true in that he killed everybody um, basically this dude was nuts his wife was nuts they both had done 10 years in the state psychiatric hospital for violent crimes she had actually tried to kill her one of her kids and he tried to kill somebody else they had both been convicted in what is in Arizona guilty except insane which basically means you don't go to prison you go to the psych hospital and so they're both fucking nuts and I guess they both you know drugs and alcohol in their systems and still mentally unstable together and one thing leads to another no clue what but he hacks her head off he ha he kills the dogs and then he gouges his own fucking eye out and hacks off his arm did I mention crazy bastard I'm pretty sure I mentioned crazy bastard um, this fucking guy I uh, I don't know how to process that I don't it's it's just kind of a how what even crazy what you know okay if you're gonna be crazy and you kill your wife that's one thing but this guy was crazy and mutilated himself too and 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 your dogs really the dogs what the fuck did the dogs do were the dogs trying to attack you after they killed mama really it's like you go and killed their you know their mom owner and then so they get pissed and come after you and how do you decapitate two dogs because one of them had to seen the shit and come after you I'm just all I'm gonna say it's like one of them dogs had to have defended themselves or you sedated the dogs in which case that's well thought out decapitation of an animal fucking crazy bastard that's all that's all I have to know I don't know his name I don't really care he's crazy bastard this is my new in between segments music that's because this is like the third time I've recorded this shit 
and I can't do it the same way twice because it's all random thoughts and processes and crazy shit going through my head. I don't know what I'm going to say next. I've covered all these stories four times now just between rehearsal, fail recording, fail recording, oh, ran out of time, oh, system crashed, everything got wiped, you know, shit like that. And it's turning into a running gag in my office that I can't get this damn show recorded and uploaded. But I'm going to try, damn it. And let's see, there, okay, for a second I got a little scare, my screen went black and I was like, oh, fuck, don't stop recording on me now. Um, <laughs> let's see, so we have covered Roddy Piper, we've covered Ronda Rousey, we've covered Crazy Bastard decapitating his wife, and now let's have a little bit of fun. I actually, this week, well, it was last week at this point, I actually was reading a story, it was talking about urban legends that happened to be true. And some of them were kind of, like, it's not really an urban legend. Uh, one of them was, I guess, there's a building that it, it sits on the border, so the building itself exists in both the United States and Canada. And that's not an urban legend, that's a trivial pursuit question. You know, um, it, apparently all of the like Chinese orchids that are in Washington, D.C. were gifted from China, where, look, fuck, however long ago, like, oh, they all came from China. They're Chinese orchids, of course they came from China. Um, you know, those aren't urban legends, that's just shit that, that's true, that's just an interesting factoid. Um, but one of them that I thought was funny, and it, because it pertained to me, um, it apparently that women are more attracted to men who play instruments. I know this from personal experience. I've been playing guitar for 15 years. Most people don't know that. Um, I, you know, it's kind of I, I live in in the realm of don't ask, don't tell. Um, more that I don't necessarily give out information, but if it comes up in a story, it comes up in a story. Um, I'm not gonna walk up to, hey, did you know I've been playing guitar? No, I don't. Really, I could jam for you right now if I had it. No, I don't do that shit. I'm not that guy who sits on the street corner out in Tempe. I've seen those guys. They suck. Put your shit away. Nobody's giving you any damn money. If you were any good, you'd be inside the club getting paid for the gig, not sitting outside with your case open. But I've been playing guitar for a long time, and it it yeah, gets attention. It's just kind of one of those women like it's it's not even like a, they like that you can play an instrument. It's like that they just the the artistry, I guess. I don't know. Just, I, I can't explain it other than it's true. Yeah. Um, it's a psychological thing, I guess. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an urban legend, and it wouldn't be factual. It would be a statistical prob you know, likelihood. Um, but, you know, it, and it probably goes to a lot of other crazy psychological things with women. But, you know, hey, what's not to like about somebody who can play music? Even if they can play an instrument badly. You know, it worked for my dad. He couldn't play his guitar for shit. He says it himself. He could play like Mary Had a Little Lamb. It still would get him laid at college parties. Okay? Period. Um, but, you know, I've been playing for 15 years. It hasn't gotten me anything because I'm too self-conscious about my own playing to really display it. Most of my family has seen me play, but outside of that, most people don't hear me. You know, the neighbors might hear me and it's a whole other issue. My my boys hear me and they love hearing me play. And my sister and I always argue about who's better. Not that we have that argument of oh I'm a better musician than you. It's no you're better than me. No you're better. No you're better. You know we argue that the other one is better. And I've basically surmised that she plays the kind of stuff that I want to play. I play the stuff that she wants to play. And neither of us can play that other style. That's just kind of it. So. Urban myth number two, because there were only like two of them that were like urban myths that were worth knowing anything about. Apparently, the Pentagon, you know, the people in charge of defending our country and running the military, have a contingency plan for a zombie apocalypse. That's right, Rihanna. The government acknowledges that there might be a zombie apocalypse. 
You know, it's bad enough that my wife is obsessed with zombies and her doomsday plan is based around a zombie apocalypse. She doesn't think the world's going to end in a big ball of fire or a meteor or a flood or, you know, anything like that. She's thinking World War Z. She's thinking Walking Dead. This is her plan. And her plan involves us making it across three fucking states to get back to her dad's house because he's got a big house with acreage. Well, you know what? I watched The Walking Dead, and what the hell happened to the guy who had the big-ass fucking farm? It got overrun. I'm just saying, sorry baby, I think there's a hiccup in your plan, just ask Herschel. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, no problem with the zombie apocalypse plan, but, you know, I'm, I think the government has more important things to do than worry about zombie apocalypse. You know, granted, nowadays most people view zombies more like the bacterial zombies, like the 28 Days Later and shit like that, and where it's more of a virus that makes people go fucking crazy and start, you know, eating each other kind of shit. You know, people on bath salts or whatever. But the Pentagon has more important fucking things to do than worry about zombies. We got ISIS out there. We got Al Qaeda out there. We got all these crazy bastards out there trying to blow us up, and you're worried about fucking zombies? Somebody needs a cut in their paycheck. Somebody needs to, you know, lower your minimum wage so you can prioritize your shit better. Because that's fucking stupid. You know, go, you know, leave it to the doomsday preppers to have the zombie plan. Because when the government goes down, you're not going to matter what your fucking zombie plan was. It's like, when zombies happen, Pentagon doesn't mean shit. Just saying. It's going to be Bob and his shotgun. Uh, those are the only two stories on there that were worth any good. Um, one other little bit of what the fuck that I read today, and I'm still kind of, you know, what the fuck from this story. Um, I ranted on it on my last take of this. Um, was, is, Sony announced the release date for the reboot of Jumanji. That's right. Sony is trying to milk another Robin Williams movie. For more cash. What the fuck? Whose dumbass idea was it to try and remake Jumanji? It didn't need it. It was a fabulous movie. You're you're spitting on Robin Williams' grave. And I'm sure once this comes out and they start talking about the plans for the movie and what's going to happen, then they're going to start talking to Kirsten Dunst and they're going to start talking to David Alan Greer and the rest of the actors who were in the first movie and they're going to ask him, oh, you know, and ask him Robin Williams stuff and they're going to ask him what they think about the idea of doing the remake and things like this and I can just see everybody getting a little bit pissed about them, you know, kind of, I feel like they're discrediting the film that was already made. It didn't need to be touched. It was a great movie. For the time, it had great special effects. The only crap effect in that whole movie was those jittery spiders. You know, it was like, yes, it's basically just a big vibrating spider that they tilted the floor and made it, you know, they weren't especially threatening other than, like, the little bit when they had them, like, they had, like, a puppet spider that was oozing venom. Yeah, that was nasty and creepy, and it's still a giant fucking spider. I don't care if it's obviously a plastic spider. When they have enough CG and animatronic lions and elephants and other shit stampeding through the house, I don't care about the shitty spider effect. And it was still a great movie. And it was a great movie with Robin Williams being Robin Williams and not being Aladdin genie random crazy dude seems out of his mind Robin Williams. You know, I mean, he was for the most part, but... It was another example of Robin Williams just being a great performer. And everybody in that movie did such a great job that it, it it's a shame to consider the thought of remaking that movie. Um, among many others that are getting remade right now. But, you know, it's it's... I hate to jump on that whole Hollywood's run out of good ideas bandwagon. I've been saying for years the music industry has run out of good names when we've got band names like the Plain White Tees. And I don't know much about that band. I don't listen to them. Their style is not for me. But come on, that's your name? You know, 
Empire Records, the guy's name was Mark. He named his band Mark. Why? Because there's no fucking names left. All the damn names have been taken. And, you know, all the damn names have been taken for bands to where bands are picking song titles from other bands as their name. Because they're not trademarked. But, you know, they're doing the same shit with movies. It's like, oh, this was really great. I remember that movie from when I was a kid. I'm going to remake it. Like, why? If it was so good then, why would you have to remake it? Like, next thing you know, some asshole is going to come out and try and remake The Quiet Man. And I think uh, John Wayne's going to get up and kick their ass. Um, you know, John Wayne, Maureen O'Hara, and every other dead person that's... I think Maureen O'Hara is still alive. But everybody else is going to jump up out of their graves and beat the shit out of whoever says we're going to remake The Quiet Man. Because... They've remade too many movies that didn't need to be remade. Now they're going to remake Jumanji. Um, they remade Steel Magnolias, and I, I, I want to hurt somebody for that one. Because it's, no. I don't care how good of an actress Felicia Rashad is. She's not Shirley MacLaine. Dead. She, might, she wasn't even Weezer. Um, I, I don't remember the name of the actress who played um, Clary. You know, fairly decent resemblance, but nonetheless, Queen Latifah cannot substitute uh, Dolly Parton or Sally Field or Daryl Hannah or Julia Roberts. I'm sorry, you, you just can't do it. The cast of the original and, and the delivery of the original was too good. Yes, that's me commenting on what's probably the mother of all chick flicks. It's a good movie, damn it. Um, and if by some chance by now mom's figured out how to listen to my show yeah that's kinda it mom, mom would jump on the support to, yeah and she's the reason why I watched all those chick flicks on, to end on end on end I can me memorize that damn movie just talk to my sisters they're no better let's see we are we're actually running low on time but tonight I'm actually recording just straight I don't necessarily have a time limit tonight under normal circumstances I'd be sitting here thinking oh shit I've got to wrap up the show tonight but I, I, the only reason I've got to wrap up the show is because I kind of blew through and my last take I had probably a good 20 minutes of what rambling and fumbling through shit just because I was going through it and as I sat there editing out all the bullshit I got well below 30 minutes again I was like damn like I had almost 45 minutes of, of show and I edited the fuck out of it and next thing I know I'm below 30 minutes again and now I feel like I need to talk some more. And now I'm kind of back in that place because I, I streamlined all of my rants from my first take. About to knock my little ghetto mic stand over here. Um, you know, because I'm using a mic that, shit, I think this mic well, is well older than my children. I'll give it at least that much. This is probably a 10 year old plus karaoke mic, but it's a you know, vocal dynamic microphone that I've had for probably at least 10 years. I don't remember where the hell I got it from my dad. I don't know where he got it from, but it works. It records, and because it's a dynamic microphone versus being a condenser mic, it's not going to pick up all the bullshit echoes and crap that's in my room because I can't record. Um, in a padded studio or anything. I probably got some echo out here. You guys tell me better than I can. I'm, I sound, know I sound a little mechanical and probably sound a little bit like I'm underwater, but screw you guys. This is what I got to work with. I'm not spending $200 on a professional condenser microphone and then however the fuck much to pad my room in here. Um, I think we went over that before anyway. I don't know why I just started talking in that accent like that. It just kind of happens. But you know, sometimes you just you start drifting into something, and, and it's gonna happen. And sometimes you just open up the little box, and you know, characters start flowing out, and you just kind of get stuck that way. And I'm probably gonna be stuck like this for the rest of the evening. But it's it's one o'clock in the morning at this point. I just go to sleep and just hope I don't wake up like this. So for the rest of the evening, I think I'm just gonna finish doing the show like this. I just probably gonna piss off my wife for quite a bit, but she's not gonna listen to it for a few days. Then again, she might just get bored in the morning and listen to the show and then post it up and she'll be like, Oh, why did you start talking like that? It got so annoying at the end of the show. It sounds nothing like that at all, but I'm kind of stuck talking like this. 
But this is the shade that's going to make my show funny because I can just go on like this. This is the first time I've been able to switch over into an accent, like change my voice at all since I've been doing the show. It only took me like 10 shows worth of recording to get there, but hey, we fucking got here. So, I think I'm going to be ending the shows like this from now on, and we'll probably wrap up for the night. Don't want to scare you off too much. So, it well, looks like we'll be talking to you next week here on the Odd Dad Out podcast. You all have a good night here.